Hello friends, this is Coach Butter. Coach Teresa. Welcome to another episode of the Leaner Stronger podcast. In this episode of the podcast, you are going to learn how to make running feel more enjoyable. And that's a big thing. Like I've heard so many people, so many of my clients, like one of their goals that they state is that I just want to be able to go for a 10k run, just like ad hoc, out of nowhere, put on my trainers, get on the river trail or wherever you run and just bounce along the river trail. Just, you know, like a gazelle gallop like a gazelle and just look graceful and just look at your pace. Just, oh, gee, I'm going that quickly. <laughs> Other people enviously admiring your stride, thinking that, oh, it must be an professional athlete or something Ooh, that's it the wind kind of just brushing your perfectly face. setting your hair into the perfect alignment and just like the sun gleaming through the leaves in the perfect angle man but, but <laughs> that sounds great yeah but then when you actually do put in your trainers and you get onto the river trail, it's everything but. Yeah. yeah. We've got some experience from that, don't I've, we? I've been there. Yeah? A lot. <laughs> what does that feel like? It feels heavy. It feels loud. My shins are sore. By 600 meters, my left knee is like, oh, a bit crook. Uh, my breath is more like a aggressive pant. <laughs> my face is red. I'm watching other people go past and like, well, they're leaving me in their dust. Yeah. Yep. It's like the the two old women who are like walking the, with the dementia sticks. They're like leaving you into the dust. <laughs> that's that's mean. But yes. In okay, Finland, we call them the dementia sticks because it's like, <laughs> oh, hi, excuse me, but you forgot your skis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I get you. So those pole things. Yes, exactly. <laughs> ah, my mom used to be big on those, but I, I don't think she does it anymore. I okay. Give her some shit. I think my auntie still do it. Oh, auntie Anna. Anyways, not Auntie Anna, the other one. Oh, Anyways, okay. <laughs> so that's the oftentimes the reality. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about how do you turn the slow and heavy, slow and heavy into wild and free gallop along the river trail. Mm. How do you get to running 10K without it really feeling like a tanker. Before we get to that, if you found this and the previous episodes useful, <laughs> this episode's been useful so far, so far so good. If you found any of our episodes useful, you enjoy the content and you know of someone else who would also enjoy the content, would you please make it easy for them to find our content either by telling them about it or leaving us a rating and a review, maybe leave us a comment, ask a question, Connect with us on our Instagram at Coach Buru, at Coach Teresa West. We appreciate for you taking the time out of your life and spending some time with us here in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So, how do we do that? Right? What's the solution? Where do we even start? How well, do we go from heavy and out of breath to wild and free? To wild and free. Well, as a, like a theoretical realization, I think the biggest reason why it doesn't feel wild and free is that a lot of us have lost the ability to move like humans evolved to move. Human movement and running in particular, like persistence hunting, that was a that's a biggest one of the biggest reasons why our bodies look like they look like these days. From the top of your head, like the ligament that keeps your head in the in a in position and you can like stabilize your head while you're running and while you're moving the sole reason why we have that and chimpanzees don't is because we evolved to be persistence hunters mm. chase down animals along the in the african savanna or wherever later after that for really, really long distances until the animals would collapse from heat exhaustion, but we could just keep on going because of our 
our very elastic and efficient movement capabilities. Right. So basically, you're saying that we've lost that ability to go and hunt down that animal. Like, we would starve. Literally. If we were stuck out in the savannah now these days, if we don't have this capability, we would... We would not be able to hunt down that food. For many re- <laughs> I think for many reasons, a lot of us would be in some really deep shit if we were just dropping into the middle of the savannah. Even if it was like a little tribe of us. We would be in some really deep shit. It was but screwed. yes, I think the, one of the major reasons would be that we would just wouldn't be able to move as efficiently and economically mm-hmm. as a, like a, on average. Mm-hmm as our ancestors would have been on average. Mm. What would you say are like some of the biggest reasons why we wouldn't we we don't have access to that anymore? Well, the the biggest reason let's think about from the other perspective like where do you learn to move elastically, economically and efficiently? Mm. In your childhood when you when you play and you explore different type of movement and you learn how to manage pressure inside your body how to manage fluid and gas and viscera so that you can turn in different directions when you're jumping when you're landing how to interact with the ground in the most efficient elastic way possible so that you maximize the energy that when you you land on the ground and your your foot lands on the ground your during the foot contact, your tendons are storing elastic energy mm-hmm. and then there's a recoil and that elastic energy is returned. Mm-hmm. And that's when like you look like a really young athletic person. Mm-hmm. They look like a super ball. Yeah, it's so true. Like, like a bouncy ball. You know, as a teacher, I was a little while ago now, but when you see kids play and just run around the schoolyard or wh- whatever it might be, I don't think you've, you're ever looking at a child and being like, oh, that looks really weird. Like, why are you moving like that? Like, it's just so wild and free. They bounce. They kind of can, you know, change their body in, in all ways, shapes and forms. And it just looks very, like, agile. They just flow. That's that, exactly right. Yeah. And, and that's a sign that, like, okay, you have had some, you know, good play in your life and yeah. you, you've engaged your entire system in a way that it's supposed to. Totally. But then I think at at some point then, you know, that's taken away. Like we spend more and more time sitting down or less and less physical education in schools, less and less time to play. You might give up a sport that you, you, you were engaging in as you were growing up. You give it up. Now you're just sitting down. Your head's in the book or whatever in the in the ipad in the Mm. phone in the laptop yeah you don't engage these systems of your body that need constant stress so that they stay up to scratch that's the the main principle is that use it or lose it is the name of the game Mm, so so true if you don't use your elastic system and your movement capabilities you lose that ability yeah i think when i see this in the real world and like i don't think it takes you know, like a special eye to see this, but you might be sitting at the traffic lights and you might see somebody who's either trying to dash across the road like really quickly or the the pedestrian crossing's about to turn red and you kind of see somebody tr- cross, but they're trying to go as fast as they can, but your eyes are just like, whoa, something's not quite right with how that person's trying to cross the road. Like it just looks really either locked up or they shuffle. Or... Yeah. Is that kind of what you mean? That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that that's exactly what I mean. And the, and the, the what it comes down to is just like really what it comes down to is how much time are you spending on the ground with every single footstep? Mm. That's the thing. When you see someone running and it looks like, "Oh my god, you're that doesn't look very efficient." Yes. That looks very painful. It sounds very painful. What it comes down to is that you're spending too much time on the ground. You're probably hitting the ground way in front of your center of mass with Mm -hmm. your heel. So when that happens, you are not engaging the elasticity of the tendons. And instead, the load is just traveling straight up the leg into your knees, into Mm -hmm. your hips, into your lower back. That's really slow. It's really inefficient. And it feels like shit. Mm -hmm. 
versus when you see that person who just like with a couple of bounds yeah glides through the intersection uh, yeah and it seems like they're like barely touching the ground yeah. that is someone who is spending less time on the ground because they have a better more efficient elastic system cool. and they're more efficient at moving yeah side note it was really interesting that you say that so in the marathon at one point there was like a couple of people that would maybe be like you would either run past them or maybe even they would run past you for a moment and the how loud their foot contact mm. hit the ground was like really quite alarming actually mm. but it was interesting because the people who had the loudest um foot contact they were the ones who you would see having like a knee, knee brace. brace yeah that's it so i like obviously i'm not an expert in this but i would maybe say you know that reminds me of what you've just said yeah i can kind of relate those two together 100 percent. yeah one one hundred percent. Interesting. Right? Yeah. So how do you then re-engage this elastic system? Like, how do you regain the ability to move like a human is intended to move, so that running will become more efficient and more enjoyable? It becomes bouncy, elastic, wild, and free. The first step is to like engage your your mind when you when you're running and appreciate that this is a skill running. A con- beautifully and efficiently it's a skill that either you never learned because you didn't for some reason you didn't learn it as a child you were put straight into the books and you basically skipped a part of your development as a as a human being Mm. or you learned that but just somewhere along the way you've lost the skill so realize that running isn't something and how you run it isn't something that's passed on to you through your genetics and now you're gonna run like that forever that's a load of bullshit it's a skill that you can develop and of course there are these physical qualities as well that we're gonna get into a little bit like you know strength I already spoken a lot about elasticity like all these things power speed and just the strength of your legs and the the bones and the tendons and the muscles. Of course, this is really, really important to develop. But the first thing to appreciate is just like, okay, running is a thing that I can actually get better at. Mm, this is just a start, skill component. Yeah, re- reframe it. That yeah. this is something that I can actually get better at. And I want to think about these things. I want yes. I want to be elastic i want to be bouncy wild and free i don't want to be slow and heavy and yeah does totally. that make sense absolutely so what i can relate that to is you know when you first start training you assume that okay a squat is a squat which kind of is but then the more that you go into training you're like oh wow there's actually a lot of detail technique yeah. there's nuance and i think the people who just start to appreciate that nuance they're generally want the people who get a lot more out of their training because they can respect that there is some technique there's some skill there's some detail and for me personally like once i started really appreciating that from a running component then i was able to give it more of like uh yeah i guess more respect more and i was more engaged with it and more engaged with the whole process because i was able to appreciate that nuance yeah yeah and a really powerful way to make that a little bit more objective is to video yourself running ask someone to film you or film yourself and then you can you can see yeah like you can you can really see like what's what's happening if you slow down the video Mm. and that's a great place to start to bring more mindfulness into how you run and then also to establish a baseline of like what does my running look like now and how does that relate to how does it feel versus so you have a a starting point and then by the time it feels awesome and it feels much more enjoyable it should also look very very different and it will 100 percent look very very different Mm. so that's that's the the number one thing how do you make running more enjoyable is to appreciate that it is a it is a skill component now how do we also improve skills like what's another way to do that is through specific drills specific exercises that can be done within the space of 
10 meters or even just on the spot actually you can learn and develop this postural awareness of how to move your arms and your legs and how to interact with the ground and if you do those things enough times you put the you store the information on the back of the brain of how does how should this feel and then when you actually go go for a run very quickly your running will actually be transformed because you can now tap into that postural awareness and the movement skill that you've built during these running mechanics drills. Mm. Yeah. Sprinting is another one, like running fast. That's a really, really important. A lot of people who right now can't run very well, they want to go towards running 10K quite easily. And your approach only includes going for long runs, like, you know, six k's or five k's or something like that a long continuous run the reason why that's not a good approach to only do that is because if you're running right now is slow and heavy by running slow and heavy you're only going to keep running slow and heavy sometimes you need to run fast elastic and powerful and the best way to do that is to do some sprint training just good old sprinting like short distances uh, we're talking about like 30 meters 30 meter sprints accumulating some good good quality 30 meter sprints will give you so much of the power elasticity speed that you need in your lower limbs so that you can then tap into that elasticity on your longer runs but if you don't have that elasticity and that speed and that power you have nothing to tap into it's just slow and heavy all the way mm, yeah so not trying to just do like feed more of the same thing more of the same thing exactly that's that's literally what it what it boils down to yeah and that's uh, the segue to the second component of it which is to actually like follow a program like follow a program if you really want to get better at something why wouldn't you take advantage of the principles of exercise science that have been studied and proven to work in literally in getting better at any kind of physical endeavor it is like i feel like a lot of people think that following a program when it comes to like running it's contradictory to just experiencing running as this like it's like a stress release or like uh like a, a you know just being wild and free and just going for that graceful gallop but then like if you were to follow some kind of a program that would be like making it dirty yeah. you know what i mean it puts too much like pressure too much expectation too much like structure so then it's taking away from what it initially like was meant to fulfill yeah does that make sense yeah absolutely yeah okay, absolutely cool. I, I get and i i just think that that's just an unfortunate like that's just an egoic uh, like that's just your ego talking really mm. because then sorry what were you gonna say yeah I, I i agree just on as you're saying that like maybe it's your ego trying to protect you just in case you're not able to fulfill the plan yeah yeah exactly but the real reality is that like by having a plan that has been designed in you know intelligently like the plan starts from where you're at right now it's specific to where your capability is right now and then it's progressive in that it doesn't give you something that you can't do right now but it's with the minimum effective dose you progressively start doing more and you're incorporating all these different types of stresses like we just discussed you don't just want to do the slow and heavy run like you need to do some shorter runs you need to do some interval training you you don't need to but if you want to get better at this thing like as quickly as possible and as good as possible it's a good approach to incorporate all these different kinds of modalities so that 
you don't just stress that one thing. Mm -hmm. It's always like when you, if you just do the same one thing, your like ability to be a resilient and anti-fragile being, if you specialize too much in just one thing, you actually become fragile. You need some exposure to many different types of things so that you ultimately become resilient. Mm, so true. Yeah. You know, I think we've got a lot of people who listen to this who are really interested in strength training. And you know that if you want to increase strength with, for example, your squat, your deadlift, or your bench press, you're not just going to do squat, bench, or deadlift, mm. right? You've got to put some like other accessory exercises in there to kind of build up those numbers for those maybe three specific lifts. I don't know if that... that <laughs> kind of correlates yeah, it's a perfect it's actually a really good analogy good analogy yeah if you have some powerlifting minded people listening out there who really not, not even necessarily powerlifting yeah. more just like hey if you want to increase your bent uh sorry your deadlift yeah you kind of know that there's there's some other like components underneath that's that it deadlift. we're gonna do some single leg deadlifts every now and then you know we're gonna we're gonna do some pure hip extension exercises yeah, yeah you're 100 percent right yep 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 yeah. <laughs> and that is a good point too about of course like strength training being a really really important part of this equation when it comes to like regaining the ability to move like humans intended to be and move sorry and to be resilient so it really comes down to like sure you can go and just do the running just keep doing the slow and heavy running that's one option but the real ticket, like how do you actually make running feel way more enjoyable, much, much quicker, is to have a holistic hybrid program that's like building strength and resilience in the gym, building the postural awareness and the 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 skill of interacting with the ground in the way that you should, and then putting that into action in the running that's also been broken down into different types of running workouts so that you're not just doing the same slow and heavy thing. That's how you make running more enjoyable mm. rather quickly, actually. Absolutely. And I, it gives you a little bit more variation as well. Not that we need a lot of variation psychologically, but, you know, it's always nice as well to not just have to, like, rock up and do a 5K four, three to four times a week. Yeah. You know? It makes it way more enjoyable, yeah. honestly, to have different types of <laughs> runs yeah like it, it really does it does yeah like you know yeah. today we're going to the track yes. and on when we're not on the track we're going to run fast mm. so that's a cool thing but then i can see how you know if, if i i know that if i was going to the track and just going around the same 400 meter loop like a couple times a week that would get really stale but because it's only once a week it, no problem i can like go and really drop the hammer and get some really good stimulus out of that environment because mm. it is such a good place to go fast mm. compared to like a somewhere where it's like hillier and there's a lot of people you have to cross crossings yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. no it's great and i think like from like another big component is mindset as well and like really being able to reflect that okay, this particular run feels like really lot slow, heavy, you know, all those undesirable mm. qualities that we want. But then after you've done a week of like some of these other variations, going a little bit faster or doing some sprinting, and then you come back to that long run again the following week and you can really feel that there's that change, you know, I think that builds confidence and that keeps kind of building on the, the mindset that you need to be like, okay, you know, I'm just looking for progress. I'm not looking for perfection here. That's exactly right. Mm. And that brings to my mind a, uh, an important thing about like to some, sometimes to go fast, you need to go slow sometimes too, you know? So some of the running that you should do should be, some of the sessions should be really easy. You shouldn't always have to always try to drop the hammer and absolutely kill yourself. That's very counterproductive. You got to let your body recover and adapt so because of that reason you can't just go hard gung-ho every <laughs> single time but very strategically you have to have some easier running in there every single week and that's also you know gonna train a different thing which is like the 
the difference between the different energy systems of the body like i we is the running more aerobic are we just training stroke volume mitochondrial density capillary density or are we improving your lactate threshold are we improve you know improving your anaerobic capabilities like holy shit like that's another whole kind of worms that we're obviously not going to get into right now <laughs> but should be appreciated mm. and understood when designing a holistic plan. Mm, 100%. Yeah. Do, do you have any specific um, tips or recommendations for people who might be having some of that mind chatter like during their run? If if they've been told, you know, start slow, but it's just feeling like really slow and heavy and maybe they're expecting it to have already been like a lot better by this point in mm. time or you know, whatever it might be. Yeah, definitely. So I would recommend starting with some kind of an interval approach in that instance. Is that what you mean? Mm. Kind of kind of like a walk run type of a yeah. type of a situation. I would highly recommend that. So let's let's say for instance that you find that you can run about 500 meters feels pretty good, but then if you try to let's say that you wanted to go for a 5k run, right? And you notice that 500 meters feels pretty good, but then it just starts getting into that slow and heavy, slow and heavy, doesn't feel that good anymore after about like one and a half Ks or something. So what I would do instead do, and this is what I do in the in some of the programs to you know run these uh, that I've designed on my training app, is that initially you just run 500 meters, but you do it a little bit faster. And then 500, 500 meters or for a couple minutes, you just walk. And you just let yourself recover and then you go again and then you again you accumulate this good quality movement and then progressively we then increase the amount of running and reduce the amount of walking until you get to the point where you're just blasting out that 5k like it's nothing Mm, and I think that's huge you know from like a self-confidence like self-esteem building perspective as well yes and like just really being okay with not being like perfect at the start Mm. and knowing that if you follow the program and you stay consistent that yes you are actually going to progress and believe it or not like relatively quickly yeah i would say with running if you actually show up and you try not to go full gun ho too quickly 100 <laughs> percent. your race your pace right your and, race your you know, pace don't compare yourself to the people you see around you you don't know their circumstances like or their history their history you don't know their upbringing maybe they were maybe even if they even though they don't look like it, maybe they were brought up in the kenyan highlands and they had to run 10k to school every day barefooted who knows you never know where where someone's been that's it you know i think comparison is the killer of joy so just yeah you know focus on yourself focus on your progress focus on your run and and as well like taking the nature that's around you that's always great too so i think that's a pretty big one don't compare yourself to other people compare yourself to yourself and just commit to becoming better and one of the best ways to commit to becoming better is actually to sign up to an event yes that's very very exciting and you know there's like now there's like so many different events you can do like even just the park run literally every almost every weekend you can go and do a, a park run that's a pretty cool concept i think obviously very very friendly but of, of course all of these are very friendly you could look up uh, an event in some pretty epic place like we just did the Great Ocean Road, that was totally epic. Or in, if you live in a big city like Melbourne, for example, there's the Melbourne Marathon Festival coming up on the 15th of October. And it's not just the marathon, there's a 5K, 10K, half marathon, 21K, and then a full marathon, 42 kilometer events. And I think they have some other ones too, some like in between in between those ones. Yeah, they might have like a 14K or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not not so great with the, the, the minor details yeah so not su- suggesting that if you haven't been running much like maybe don't sign up for the marathon like you don't have to go david goggins here i really don't recommend you going david goggins here i recommend being realistic and if you don't know what's realistic for you talk to someone who knows what they're talking about and they can help you to figure out 
a realistic goal. And if you do happen to live in Melbourne, or if you're just happening to be in Melbourne on the 15th of October on that weekend, we have set up our own run club, Run Stronger Run Club for the marathon festival. So I'm going to be doing the full marathon. You're I'm going doing to, the half marathon. Half marathon. We're going to support anyone running a 5K or a 10K or half marathon or full marathon. We can help you to get to the finish line with confidence in that you feel good you're much less likely to be injured and you're actually like in one piece in the in the in the in the start line sorry <laughs> get to the start line first feeling confident so no that then you can go on the exactly <laughs> no promises for the finish line we just want to get you there feeling confident feeling awesome and ready for a really epic experience Mm, absolutely. I can't promise you'll be in one piece after, especially if you do decide to go goggins on me. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's always is, and I think that's the biggest uh, resistance that people may have signing up to something like this. Mm. They're like, I'm scared that I'm not going to be ready by this state. That's it. Because they've never done something like that before. But sometimes never doing something before and being okay with not being in control is actually probably one of the biggest like lessons that you can get from this. <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah. Don't let your bullshit hold you back. That's really. it. Don't let you be like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. So I'm, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start running and then in two months time, I'm gonna see how I'm doing mm. and then I'm gonna register. Mm. Ah, bad approach bad approach number one you said that last year and you didn't do it just throw it on the window number two right now it's 19 weeks to that weekend and this is that's it's pretty much the perfect amount of time to get started and get to work so you have time to do all these things that we've spoken about today so if you want to join the team if you want to be a part of the team, make running feel more enjoyable, gain confidence, minimize the risk of injuries, and of course, crush your PBs. And you want our help to do that either on the 5K, 10K, 21K, or 42K distance. Head over to coachbooter.com slash marathon club. Leave your details and I'll get back to you. And we're going to be talking about the details on how we're going to get there. Or you can ask a question on Instagram at Coach Buter, at Coach Teresa West. If you found that useful, if you thought that there was some useful tips, would you please share this episode with someone who you think would appreciate them? Leave us a rating and a review. Thank you so much for your time and your attention. And we hope that you have a fantastic rest of the day. This is Coach Buter. Coach Teresa. Let's do this. Oh.